Hi friends, I'm Katie Brinkley and you're listening to Rocky Mountain Marketing. With nearly two decades helping business owners, consultants, and coaches with their digital marketing, I know that social media can be an incredible tool to grow your business when you know how to do it the right way. And that's what we're going to do today. I teach you how to navigate the world of entrepreneurship and digital marketing, and hopefully you'll grow your business with a few great tips you wouldn't have known otherwise, and maybe even discover a great local business you love. Let's dive into today's episode. We are in for a treat today because we're going to go old school. We're talking Facebook today, and I'm sitting down with one of my very good friends and power partners. She and I have actually had the opportunity to hang out in real life multiple times, and every time we get together, we get all these great ideas about different ways that we can collaborate and different w- tools that we can use together to help grow our businesses. She's been in the social media game for just about as long as I have. She's a, a mom, a amazing entrepreneur, and she's also helped over 300 businesses build their audiences and their groups on Facebook. Yes, we are talking Facebook today. And all of the clients that she's helped, she's helped them build five to seven figure months using these strategies that we are talking today. My guest is none other than Sierra. Sierra, thank you so much for joining me on Rocky Mountain Marketing. I'm so excited to be here with you, Katie, on Rocky Mountain Marketing. You know, and I think that too, like every time that we we talk, you know, Facebook is your jam. Instagram, LinkedIn, those are strategies that that I have down. But every time we're, we're together, we talk Facebook and it just comes so easily to you. And I'm, I love the questions that you ask because they're so simple. And with what you're doing on Facebook, I've used these strategies as part of my Facebook strategy in 2023, and I've seen incredible results. So I'm really excited to be talking about Facebook with you, Facebook groups, and you know, everyone wants to say that Facebook is dead. Oh, who's on Facebook? Just a bunch of old people. I don't want to talk to my grandma or to my mom or, or, you know, my aunt. But there's still a lot of business to be had there. Honestly, I didn't bring in my statistics today, so don't let me misquote that. But I do know (laughs) that as far as any social media platform out there, Facebook has 2.8 billion with a B, 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 B billion monthly active users. The next closest platforms are YouTube and Instagram with a billion. And so like it has an entire extra billion of users that are active on Facebook and Facebook is really strict on the no bot policy. So as soon as it recognizes a bot, it shuts those down and it's probably one of the best platforms out there in terms of shutting down bots. And so just that information alone tells you that there's a lot more opportunity to be had on Facebook than any other platform. Not that Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or LinkedIn or any of the other platforms out there are bad. They are also very, very good and it's very lucrative. Like 1.8 billion is nothing to snub your nose at. But 2.8 billion, it's like, why would you just completely discount it because your mom was on it? You know, <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. And I think that with Facebook, a lot of people want to give it a bad name. You know, they did go through some hard times like during the election and everything, but they've been working really hard to turn the platform around. There's reels on Facebook, there's Facebook groups, there's Facebook marketplace. I mean, there's so many different avenues to so- post and create content. Facebook is the only platform that has a really good community effort. I talk a lot about one-to-one, like we've all heard about one-to-one marketing. We've all heard about one-to-many marketing, but one of the key marketing pieces that most businesses don't have is many-to-many. And the thing is, is like they have the share buttons on other platforms where you can share it, but it's like a one-to-one share or it's like they're sharing something on their platform, which is again, one-to-many, but inside of a group, you can have many-to-many. And when something is shared inside of a group that you're the owner of, which can only really happen on Facebook because no other group platforms out there are nearly as good as Facebook. Facebook does a lot of the hard heavy lifting for you. Whereas a lot of these other group platforms or community platforms out there, they don't actually do the heavy lifting for you. You still have to drive all the traffic to want to come back. Facebook drives all the people to the platform for you and they keep people engaged on the platform. But then inside of the group, if you have many to many, somebody inside of your group can come and talk about your topic. They can post their own post. And then with all of their followers or friends or people that they've connected with inside of the group, then those people can connect with them. And you don't even have to be a part of that conversation, which means you don't have 
have to post, you don't have to create the content, you don't have to try and sell anything there. Other people are selling your group for you and they're keeping people inside of your community for you, which is amazing because if you think about any mastermind or group or community that you've been a part of, you never forget who the leader of that community is. And you always remember where you met the people that you're connected with. And so that builds you as a leader even more. And you're not going to get that on any other platform other than Facebook. And, and I love that we're, we're diving into to groups kind of right off the back because, you know, man, it, it's probably been about five years now, but Mark Zuckerberg spent a lot of money during the Super Bowl promoting Facebook groups. It was three years ago. That was, it was just three years ago. Holy cow. Yeah. It God. was like, it was right before the pandemic hit. <laughs> so, I mean, like, it goes to show you how like, the pandemic has like time warped all reality, but three years ago, he spent probably millions and millions of dollars on those two Facebook ads promoting. Was, uh, I want to say it was 3 million. <sighs> okay. $3 million promoting just a feature, a free feature of Facebook and Facebook groups. There's a number of ways to post content on Facebook. There's your personal page, there's the business page, and there's Facebook groups. Would you mind just kind of quickly telling us the difference between those three different ways of posting before we dive into groups specifically? Right. You have uh, your personal profile and you have digital creator. And I'm actually really disappointed, guys. I can't give you a lot of tips on digital creator other than <laughs> what I tell my clients to do because Facebook has blocked me from that, which is really annoying. Any platform, just so you're aware of, and I so throw this out there into the world, no matter what platform you're on social media, if you don't actually own all the data, which you don't on social media, if you don't own all the data, you need to be backing up all of your files. And that includes CRMs as well, because a CRM at any point can decide that they're either shutting down or they're shutting you down and kicking you out. And unless you have all that data backed up somewhere, you lose all your data. So I would recommend always backing up your stuff, no matter what platform you're on. That being said, your personal profile, that one gets the most weight in the algorithm. The personal profiles, because people come to social media to be social, they come to connect and Facebook recognized that. So they built the algorithm specifically to help boost personal profiles. So if you're not doing anything business on your personal profile, you are really losing out. The next one that she mentioned was your Facebook page. Now, a Facebook page is not like your digital creator profile. It's not your personal profile. It is an actual business page that is set up with a certain intention. And you get to choose, like, what's that intention? Like, maybe you're an author or maybe you're actually running a product business or maybe you're being known as, like, a personal brand or something like that. It gives you the ability to select what type of page you are promoting, but it is going to be a business page. That one actually gets the lowest weight in the algorithm because people don't really come to Facebook to engage with pages or businesses. They're coming to engage with, with personal profiles. Now, there are several ways that you can hack that, but it is a lot of extra effort. And so then the third one is your Facebook group. And Facebook has actually put a lot of um, like she said, the $3 million into advertising. They put up billboards all over the United States in major Metroplex areas. They've also been doing a lot of internal promotion on the platform and weighted it more heavily in the algorithm, especially when a group, because there's more than 280 million groups out there, <laughs> especially when a group is getting naturally organic traction, Facebook will promote and push your group and push it out there to people that are a lookalike audience to who's engaging inside of your group or who likes other similar groups that have a similar like SEO title to yours. And so that being said with groups, one of the biggest things to keep in mind there is that it has the ability to reach further than your personal profile. Personal profile on Facebook will only get the reach that your friends allow it to get and that you allow it to get by your outreach and efforts. A group can be shown to the entire platform. And so the same thing with a page. A page can be shown to the entire platform, but it is very rare that the page gets as much reach as a group does. Does that make sense? Okay, it makes perfect sense. And for the people who are listening right now, for me, I'm like, well, why would I even wanna have a business page then? If it has the lowest rank in the algorithm, if it's you know still getting shown to the platform, but I mean, really, What's it doing for me? Why shouldn't I just go all in and on a group? And who is a group for? Can I get personal on the business page thing? 
Yeah. Okay. So when Katie and I first started talking and she and I were both going to set up our Giphy accounts, we had made these amazing gifts and she went out and she created her Giphy and her tenor and she instantly had access to her gifts. And I did not. And Katie, do you remember why that was? I don't remember why, but yeah, my gifts oh, okay. were Okay. I didn't have a website. So I built my business to multiple six figures without a website. And it's because when people want to see if you're a legitimate business, they go and look for you online. They look for you in different areas. I'd done so much guest speaking. I'd worked with so many people. I had so many testimonials out there in the world. I was on so many other people's platforms. And then I also had my Facebook page that had all my data and some testimonials on my Facebook page. And so you, in lieu of using a website, because websites can sometimes cost several thousand dollars and there's no reason why a business starts starting out should have to invest that much into building a website. You also don't have all the research and data yet. I mean, even if you do R and D, you still don't have the research and data to really get a great website for your audience. And so that being said, you can have a Facebook page that just has something basic that can be updated quickly and easily. And that's something that people can be like, who is this person that I'm connecting with on Facebook inside of this group? And then they go see your Facebook page and they're like, oh, it's a legit business. Okay, cool. And so it's just like, literally, that's almost the only reason I use it. Other than if you're doing high volume inside of groups, you can use the page to funnel people too. So that way you can have other team members helping to manage all the messages that are coming in, all the comment responses, follow up, all of that. And that's another reason why we use a page. Okay. So really having a Facebook page is only if you have a strong Facebook group strategy if you're going to utilize it in the beginning, I would still create a page just because it gives you like that instant authority. Yeah. So, no, I mean like that, that's so yeah. true. There's so many people that are out there searching and especially if you're doing ads, you have to have a page. So, um, because people are going to see who you are and if they go over there and it's a blank page, it's kind of like, well, is yeah. this a real business? So I am a strong proponent of having a Facebook page, a business page, but I always try to kind of temper expectations a little bit when it comes to Facebook business pages unless you're doing ads, you're really not going to see as much traction as you would if you had a Facebook group or if you're just, so for me, I've started using my Facebook personal page more for business reasons. Yeah. And unless you already have like a really high follower account, and I mean like getting into the, like the five, six figures of followers. So we're looking at like 10, 20, 30,000 followers or more. If you have a really high follower account, on your Facebook page at that point, you can start doing viral style posts, like viral questions, just as an example, like chocolate versus vanilla. I heard chocolate is the absolute best for lattes. What's your opinion? Something like that, where it's kind of controversial, but lighthearted and fun and easy to answer. Putting out viral questions on a page that has a high follower account is going to have the opportunity for those viral questions to get spread all over the internet because it's public. Whereas I typically tell people with their groups and you can't have a public group, but I have not seen public groups monetized well at all. And so if you have a group, I would recommend having it private so that you can collect their data and get it off of the platform as quickly as possible. Data meaning like email address, phone number, things like that. I would suggest getting that as quickly as possible. The best way to do that is with a private group and with a private group, then they can't share stuff with other people. And so on a Facebook page, as long as all of your stuff is shareable and it's highly entertaining, you will keep people coming back for more because they'll be naturally looking for the page. So it's kind of like what I was saying about building a group on another platform. If you build it on another platform, you have to do a lot of the legwork to get people to come mm -hmm. back. And with pages, you have to do a lot of the legwork to get people to come back, but there are ways to do it. And and it does benefit. I had a client who's a cattle rancher and her business page is different from her personal page because her personal page is just all about her. Her business mm -hmm. page is specifically about her ranch and she needed to be able to boost her bull sales and all of that. And then she also has marketing for other cattle ranchers and she wants to help them with their bull sales. And so we needed her page to have traction so that she could help her clients pages also have traction. And um, we were able to get, I think a 400% increase with just the first few posts. Well, and I think that all of the things that we're talking about here are, is how are you collecting data? How are you really connecting with the people on social media that are interested in your business and your brand? And you talked about viral questions. I want to dive into that, but on the group aspect, a lot of the listeners for Rocky Mountain Marketing are in the real estate industry. Ooh. So if, if a realtor 
is thinking about, okay, well, wait, you're bringing up a lot of good points. What would you recommend for somebody that works in the home industry? Should they have, should they be focusing on their personal page? Should they have a group, a public group, a private group, or should they just focus on their business page? So for personal page for realtors, so realtors are going to be local to their local area. And I've worked with several local businesses before. Um, I have not had any realtors. So if anyone wants to come and work with me, <laughs> I would love to. And I might even give you a special bonus and build out a bunch of stuff for you if you wanted to come and work with me and charge your group. But that being said, with with the local businesses, I would recommend on your page, give local news updates that people can't find anywhere else, like fun, exciting stuff so that you become the go-to person. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, like, so then people are talking about you and we'll just call you Jane. That's going to be your name for right now. So they're like, oh my gosh, Jane knows all the information on that. You just need to go follow her page. She's always posting about all of the upcoming events and blah, blah, blah. So just like you would do a sponsorship for a local event, we do the same thing essentially on our page where we spotlight different events that are coming up. Maybe we're the sponsor for them, maybe we're not. But the idea is that you become the go-to person for anything local so that people always remember your name and you stay top of mind. You can not you can do that inside of a group, but I would recommend doing that with your page. And then inside of the group, I would work on the actual personal connections for the community. So to give an example, do you mind if I give an example of yeah. like a yeah. local group that we did? So we had a women entrepreneurs group and the woman that I was helping with this group, she owned a daycare, a local daycare, and she wanted to connect with other women entrepreneurs. She was feeling really lonely in the community. And so she wanted to build this group and she had these visions. And so I started implanting in her different ideas of how to monetize and she monetized in multiple different ways. We can dive into that separately if we want to, <laughs> but so we built out the idea of monetizing. We built out the vision for the group and it had a big mission and purpose. And that's one of the things that most people don't do with their group is they just make it about sales instead of a big mission and purpose. And if you make it all about sales and what you're going to be doing for your business, it's going to not have longevity. And we want to build a community for longevity so that if or when Facebook is no longer the best group platform out there. Everyone who's in your group will follow you wherever you go. And so the idea of the Facebook group right now for a local community is that we started bringing in all of these women entrepreneurs so that they could just connect and collaborate and talk about things that were important to them and ask questions. And it was just all about community rather than being all about the business. And so that's realistically what you want to do if you're serving any kind of local business or any kind of local area, you want to make sure that you're building a community around like, what do your people like hanging out and talking about? Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing really high end real estate, then your local, like your Facebook group might be an elitist community where we specifically talk about the best restaurants or the best country clubs or the best vacation spots or who's the best person for XYZ service. Mm -hmm. And that might be where it's their go to place to talk about those bougie services. Does that make sense? I, no, it makes perfect sense. And I think that this is where a lot of businesses, small businesses, realtors are missing out because they think, oh, okay, well, I just want to just staying with the realtor. I got to list, show my just listed, my just sold, you know, and that's it. But really you have to establish yourself as that go-to authority and you're the leader of the community. So I, I love those examples that you gave. And I think that, you know, a lot of people might, you've said it multiple times on this episode so far of monetizing the Facebook group. And it's like, well, wait, 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 like, so you charge people to have access to like this Facebook community that doesn't make sense. Or how are you monetizing this group? And a lot of, and we're both in the same mastermind and our group is off of Facebook. And I gotta tell you, if it was on Facebook, I would be a lot more active in it. It's, it's hard for me to remember to leave. I mean, Facebook's on my phone. I get notifications for work things. It's and hard for me to remember yeah, to go we to use this. it for business and yes. we like naturally we're standing in line waiting somewhere and then we just pop up in Facebook to check on our friends and yes. like whatever the case may be, it's like subconscious now to go to Facebook or yeah. Instagram or LinkedIn maybe, but it's not like most of the other group platforms out there. It's not a subconscious thing to go to them. You yeah. were diving into monetization though. Do you want to finish yes. asking that question? Yeah. Yeah. So how, how are you monetizing a Facebook group? 
So there's multiple different ways. My favorite way to start with for anyone who is brand new out there is make sure you have a high ticket offer. And it's very simple. We do a free group. The idea is a free group because we want people to be able to feel comfortable and confident coming in. We don't try to hard sell them on the way in. We soft sell them and offer them something for free to build goodwill and trust. And it's always something that can get them a quick win on the front end. And this is no matter what we're offering. So if we're offering high ticket, if we're offering low ticket, if we're offering paid workshops, if we're offering in-person events that are paid, if we're offering memberships into something, um, there's so many different ways. If we're offering sponsorships and we're getting paid for sponsors inside of the group, which is another way that we've monetized, there's a lot of different ways or products. It doesn't really matter. You need to soft sell people on the way in and give them something for free to build that instant trust. And the free thing that you give them, like I said, it needs to be a a quick win. And so the quick win, what's so valuable about a quick win is that it builds trust in the three core areas. So for anyone to make a buying decision, they have to have trust in you, that you are their person who's going to help them accomplish it. They have to have trust in the way or the pathway to get there. So whatever your product is that you're selling or service, they have to have trust in that. And then the third one is they have to have trust in themselves that they will actually follow through on that. And I think that this is one of the biggest things that most businesses miss is that most people have been burned by something in the past and they blame or they have a victim mentality. And so I'm not telling you that this is it, but I'm also telling you that this is it you probably have been burned by something in the past and perhaps have a victim mentality that when you jump into something else, you're gonna have the same experience and it's gonna be that thing's fault. It's actually most often that we don't have the ability to commit to something and follow through. And so if you can give them a quick win on the front end, then they actually take the action themselves and follow through. And this is another problem inside of most, like we were talking about, one of the masterminds that we're in and wanting to be more involved or wanting to be more active in it and stuff like that. In the masterminds, even the highest level ones, if we don't get a quick win on the front end, then we're just sitting there spinning our wheels. We're losing trust in ourselves and we're losing trust in the program and we're losing trust in those other areas because realistically the foundation of any program or service or product out there is trust in yourself to follow through with it. It's like, I've done, I've done things like diet pills in the past. I've hired like fitness coaches. I've had business mentors. I've had mindset coaches. I've purchased products that I thought I'd stick with. And then I didn't. And I dropped off after a certain period of time, which makes me not want to purchase more of that product in the future. And it's not the product's fault. It's mine because I didn't get that quick win in the beginning, but I don't see it that way. I will never see it that way. I will 100% say this product did not work within X mm -hmm. amount of time because that was my expectation coming in. And that's right. going to be due to the marketing and it's going to be due to what people are putting, putting out as the method or modality of how to use it. So if you can give them a freebie in the beginning that gets them a really quick win and they actually follow through on it, they are going to be amazing clients. So many great points. And I think that too, once you have people that believe in what you offer, they're going to shout it from the mountaintops. They're like, yeah, it works. It works. Okay. So I want to talk about viral questions here before we wrap up today's episode, because I've been sitting here saying like going viral is not a business strategy. It's, <laughs> you know, that's been my unless soapbox. You're <laughs> <laughs> unless you're Sierra. Perfect. So Going viral is not a business strategy, according to Katie. However, when you have those questions that you, like you just said, like, it's something so simple, like for my latte, what's better, chocolate or vanilla? Why? Or anything like that. Like, let's talk. That sounds so simple. And one, how is that like going to drive more people into my business? So I actually, it's funny because I posted something on my page and somebody commented on my page. And my page only has like 500 some odd followers. Like it's super low right now for me. I, like, I feel like those numbers are low. And somebody commented on my page and was like, why is this important? Why does this matter? And I was like, well, let me tell you, because if you're utilizing viral questions in the most strategic way possible, it actually gives you a huge boost in the algorithm. So if you're using a normal viral question on your profile, the only people you should be connected with on your profile are gonna be friends and family and 
targeted audience. You're not just going to go collect or connect and add friends who are not your target market. Like that would be absolutely ridiculous. Why would you just add friends for the sake of having volume? Like the strategy Mm -hmm. going into other groups and just adding everyone in the group really irritates me because you only have 5,000 potential friends. (laughs) Like, that's just like such a waste of your time. And they're not going to engage with your stuff because it's not relevant to them. So why on earth would you want to do that? Anyways, anything, any kind of viral question on your personal profile is going to kick up traction. And what you'll find is that when you're engaging with people on either their post or your post, you will see that they actually engage with one of your next posts. They either like it, they love it, or they comment down below if it's relevant to them. And that's the most beautiful thing is that the algorithm starts to show them more of your stuff. So the more viral you can be with just like cheap, I call it cheap engagement because it literally (laughs) costs you nothing. It takes none of your time. It doesn't take your effort. Like how many entrepreneurs, so like you can just raise your hand silently to yourself or put your hand over your heart and be like, I am one of those entrepreneurs who spends way too much time creating my content. So many entrepreneurs get stuck in the weeds of building content when it's actually really simple. All you have to do is create connections and conversations. And the best way to do that is just to have some of your stuff go viral so that people start paying attention to you. And that's just Mm -hmm. the first one. That is just for top of funnel. And you can use that kind of question if you go into a targeted group that is not your own group. So don't just leverage your own group. You can literally go into somebody else's audience and they give you permission to come in and post and reach out to all of their audience and connect and make friends. How beautiful is that? What other platform can you do that? I love this. Now, if someone's sitting here saying like, well, this sounds amazing. I don't know what a viral question is. Is it like, how, how can they get some help with what a good viral question is? Okay. Well, I will give you guys a couple here on this podcast episode. So keep listening. And, you know, if you want to use this for a sound bite later, stay tuned (laughs) because we're going to give you a few here. I also am starting to put up, I'm going to be doing this every single week. I think on Fridays, either Friday or Saturday, I'm going to be putting up my favorite viral question of the week that I've seen on my page. So if you just need inspiration, you can get it there. And then I've also got a download. If anyone wants like 80 viral questions, I've got a download for people. But let's give you some here now so that you can get started immediately with this. And you might just be so inspired. You come up with some of your own that really hit. So I'm actually just going to toggle over to my page and give you guys one that I just posted this last week because it, I, it was so compelling. Like I had to comment on it. And what was interesting is I know some of the people following him and they like when something is really good. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Does anyone remember the year? I think it was like the year of COVID or the year just after. Does anyone remember the year that all of a sudden everyone started posting, like post this color, post the first picture you have that's this color on your phone? Yeah, yeah. You remember remember that, that. right? I do remember that, yeah. That caught like a wildfire and it was because it was so easy to engage with. Everybody really enjoyed it. It was fun. You want to share pictures or whatever. There was another one inside of a women's group and in the women's group it had somebody posted you know, post a picture of yourself and then go comment on other people's selfies and let's just love on each other today or something along those lines. And then just all these women started posting pictures of themselves and then just complimenting each other. And it just started this whole like love fest post. I'm like getting chills thinking about it because I'm like, I would love to have that again. Like, (laughs) let me go post that so I can go engage with it. I would love to engage with that again. And okay, I was toggling over to my Facebook page and I got distracted. So let me go back (laughs) over there real quick. And I'm just going to read you guys this post. It's my favorite one from this last week. It says, a hotel has 100 rooms. Book one room according to your battery percent. And let's see who's sharing the same room with you. Mine is room 75. Mine was room 37. Yep. See, Katie knows. (laughs) Katie saw it and Katie engaged, which means that any of his next post, Katie was shown. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. And, And it was so easy. I was like... Oh, well, look at this. This is interesting. Yeah. That's my battery. It, it, literally 10 wow. seconds. it takes you yeah. 10 seconds to engage with it. It's fun. You scroll down and you're like, Hey, nobody's sharing a room with me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then yeah. other people are like, Oh, let me go charge my, let me go charge my phone so I can share a room with you and stuff like that. It was just <laughs> hilarious. It was fun. It was fun. And I think that that's one of the things is we get so strategic and especially with this whole content creation 
I mean, it feels like we're on this roller coaster, this hamster wheel of content creation. It's never ending. There's always the need for more and more and more. And what you're talking about is very simple. It's a simple way to have once a week type of post that's just re-engaging your audience. And you can do it on your page. You can do it in other groups. You can cycle yeah. it through. The opportunities there are going to help you. And, and I think that it takes, like you said, it 10 seconds. Now it's just you going in and engaging with those people and then pushing out that next step of content. You know, now that the eyes are here, let's see who's my ideal client, the customer who's ready to buy, who's ready to go one step further, join my private Facebook group, anything. Sierra, I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to talk about the OG, I mean, we're not talking MySpace, but you know, number two OG social media platform out there, Facebook, because I feel like it's all, in, it, it's Instagram reels, it's TikTok, it's threads, it's all these things. And Facebook kind of feels like it's gotten kind of a bad rap, but it's a great way for you to connect and build your audience and it can be very easy. So where can we get those 80 viral downloaded or questions that'd be <laughs> amazing to get? Because I know that those questions, like I said, you have what, 80 of them and you are posting one oh, a week. That's I, I have 80 that you guys can download. I have yeah. more than 1500. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I've got a whole arsenal. Get. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> that I so, share with my clients that I share with my clients. So if you want to download that, you guys can send me a message at m.me, sierra.lewick. And my name is spelled C-I-E-R-R-A. Last name is L-U-E-C-K. And so that's m.me slash sierra.lewick. And send me a message and just say 80 viral questions, please. Or something along those lines so that I know that that's what you want. And I'm happy to share that with you guys and give you the link. I'd give you the link here, but it'd be a lot. I can also give Katie the link. And if she wants to share it somewhere in notes. Yes, it'll be in the show notes here. It'll be in the show notes here. Connect with Sierra on Facebook. You can kind of start seeing how she does her viral questions and learn a little bit more about what she does because these Facebook groups, if you're not utilizing Facebook for your business, if you're just using Facebook business pages and struggling and wondering what you can do to really start seeing some results from this platform, connect with Sierra. She is a wealth of knowledge. Sierra, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much, Katie, for having me. It's been a blessing to be here with you. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Rocky Mountain Marketing. Make sure to subscribe so that you can continue navigating the world of entrepreneurship. And I'd love to hear from you. Please leave the show a review and connect with me on social media. You can find me on Instagram at I am Katie Brinkley or connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you're ready to start making some sales on social media, be sure to grab my free guide to selling in the DMs without being spammy. You can get that at katiebrinkley.com. Let's keep taking your marketing to all new heights.